Every night, something strange happens deep inside this carrier's hangar, a process so classified, the Navy won't even name it. No cameras, no records, just a crew that reports at 0200 hours and leaves before sunrise. USS John F. Kennedy, $13 billion. That's what it costs to build one ship, one floating city, 5,000 souls, 75 fighter jets. But here's what they don't tell you. The most dangerous thing on this carrier isn't a missile. It's what happens when the systems fail, when the crew breaks, when the enemy you can't see is already inside. For 80 years, the aircraft carrier has been the crown jewel of American Navy naval power. Ten of them patrol the world's oceans right now. Mobile air bases, symbols of dominance, from the Pacific to the Persian Gulf, from the Mediterranean to the South China Sea. Wherever there's a crisis, there's a carrier strike group within striking distance. Each one commands an area the size of Texas. Each one carries more firepower than most countries' entire air forces. But the Navy has a problem. The first ship in this new generation, the Gerald R. Ford, cost $17.5 billion. It's four years behind schedule, and some say it's already obsolete. The electromagnetic catapults failed during testing. The advanced weapons elevators jammed. The crew complained the ship was too complex, too automated, too fragile. President Trump himself called it out, said they should go back to steam catapults, said the digital systems were too complicated, that you'd need to be Albert Einstein to figure them out. So the Navy did something different with the second ship, the USS John F. Kennedy, CVN-79. They built a carrier that doesn't just fight enemies, it fights itself. Imagine this, you're 23 years old, you haven't seen the sun in six weeks. The air smells like jet fuel and sweat. The noise never stops. Engines, alarms, boots on metal. You sleep in a rack the size of a coffin. If you sleep at all, your shift is 18 hours, sometimes 20, because there's always another drill, another alert, another aircraft that needs launching. Now multiply that by 5,000 people living on a $13 billion weapon. That could kill them faster than any enemy because history has taught the Navy a brutal lesson. The biggest threat to a warship isn't always external. July 29, 1967, USS Forrestal, a single electrical malfunction, one misfired rocket, 134 sailors dead in nine minutes. The fire spread so fast, damage control teams couldn't reach the ammunition stores in time. Bombs cooked off on the flight deck. Jet fuel turned the ship into an inferno. A young pilot named John McCain barely escaped with his life. Others weren't so lucky. July 12, 2020, USS Bonhomme Richard, an amphibious assault ship, billion-dollar vessel destroyed by a fire started by a disgruntled sailor. The ship burned for four days. By the time they put it out, the damage was so catastrophic the Navy scrapped her entirely. One person, one match, one billion dollars, gone. The lesson? The greatest threat to a carrier isn't a missile you can see. It's the system failure you can't. The crew pushed past their breaking point, the fire that spreads faster than a response team can run. So the Kennedy was designed to survive something the Ford wasn't built for. Walk through the Kennedy's hull and you'll see something strange. Sensors everywhere, thousands of them, in the berthing compartments, in the engine rooms, in the hangar bays and mess halls, and even the heads, monitoring air quality, temperature, humidity, CO2 levels smoke particles, chemical signatures, and they're not just collecting data, they're learning. The Kennedy has an AI-driven climate control system. It doesn't wait for a sailor to report that it's too hot in the engine room. It knows, before the problem becomes dangerous. It tracks patterns, learns crew behavior, predicts failures before they happen. If a ventilation fan starts drawing more power than normal, the system flags it. If air pressure drops in a sealed compartment, alarms trigger before anyone feels lightheaded. It creates microclimates, cooler air where crews work hardest, warmer zones for sleeping quarters. And at night, the lights adjust. Biophilic lighting systems that sync with circadian rhythms, blues and whites during the day to keep sailors alert, warm oranges and reds at night to help them sleep. Because the Navy learned something critical from commercial airlines and submarines. Light affects performance. Exhausted sailors make mistakes, and mistakes sink ships. On the old Nimitz-class carriers, sailors worked under harsh fluorescent lights 24 hours a day. No windows, no sunlight, no way to tell if it was morning or midnight. Fatigue became epidemic. Accidents increased. Mental health suffered. So the Kennedy's designers borrowed from circadian science, from space station research, from studies on shift workers and submariners. The result? A ship that actively manages crew wellness like a critical system. Because it is. Then, there's water. On the Ford class, the Navy expected fresh water resupply every few weeks. That meant coordinating with supply ships, planning routes around refueling points, limiting showers to two minutes, rationing laundry. But the Kennedy? It recycles 40% of its own water, showers, laundry, cooking, condensation from air conditioning units, even humidity in the air. It all goes through an automated reclamation system so advanced, 
this ship could stay at sea for a year without a single freshwater delivery. The system uses reverse osmosis, UV purification, and multi-stage filtration. Water goes in contaminated, comes out cleaner than most American tap water. The implications are strategic. Fewer supply runs mean longer deployments, greater operational flexibility, less dependence on vulnerable supply chains. In a conflict with China, where supply lines across the Pacific could be targeted by submarines and missiles, this kind of independence isn't just convenient, it's survival. But the strangest system? It's in a room most sailors will never see. Deep in the hull, past the reactor compartments, beyond the damage control stations, a sealed chamber marked with biohazard warnings and restricted access placards. Inside, algae bioreactors, living organisms that consume carbon dioxide and produce oxygen. Rows of tanks glowing green under UV lights, bubbling with life, monitored by automated sensors 24 hours a day. If the ventilation fails, if the ship takes damage and the air systems go offline, these tanks keep the crew breathing. It's a backup lung for a ship that might have to survive alone. The Navy tested this system on submarines first, found that algae could supplement oxygen production in sealed environments, reduce reliance on mechanical scrubbers. Now, they're scaling it up, making it work on a ship with 5,000 people. It's experimental, unproven at this scale. But if it works, it could revolutionize naval survival systems. Because in a future war, Carriers won't just face missiles and torpedoes, they'll face prolonged damage, systems knocked offline, crews trapped in sealed compartments for days. And this system? It could be the difference between life and death. But there's one enemy the Kennedy can't outrun, and it's already aboard. Every system on this ship is connected. Radar, weapons, navigation, communications. The Ford class was designed as a networked warship. Everything talks to everything else. Data flows seamlessly from the bridge to the combat information center to the flight deck. 20 years ago, that made carriers faster, smarter, more lethal. Today, it makes them hackable. In 2021, hackers shut down a US fuel pipeline with a single line of code, the Colonial Pipeline Attack. Gas stations ran dry across the East Coast, panic buying, lines at the pump, all because someone clicked a phishing email. In 2023, a foreign adversary penetrated DOD networks and sat inside for months, undetected, watching, learning, mapping critical infrastructure. When they were finally discovered, the damage assessment took years. Now imagine that, on a carrier. One breach, one line of malicious code, one compromised terminal, navigation goes dark, the ship drifts off course, radar feeds false contacts, phantom aircraft that don't exist, missile systems lock onto friendly aircraft instead of threats, weapons elevators stop working, flight operations halt, communications jam, $13 billion, 75 fighter jets, 5,000 sailors, dead in the water, and the enemy never fires a shot. This is the nightmare scenario the Navy war games constantly, because it's not theoretical, it's an inevitable. Every adversary, China, Russia, North Korea, Iran, they're all investing in cyber warfare, building elite hacking units, training thousands of digital soldiers. Because why sink a carrier with a missile that costs millions when you can cripple it with code that costs nothing? So, the Kennedy was built different. Its networks don't connect, not fully. Critical systems, weapons, propulsion, navigation, they're segmented, air-gapped, isolated. If one system falls, the others keep fighting. It's called defense in depth, multiple layers of protection, redundant systems, firewalls between networks. The combat information center runs on a separate network from ship operations. Weapon systems are isolated from communications. The reactor controls are completely offline. No network connection at all. It makes the ship slower to operate, less efficient. Crews have to manually transfer data between systems sometimes, but it makes the ship survivable. And the crew? They train for this. Real-time cyber attack simulations. Every week, sailors in the combat information center face scenarios scenarios where their screens go blank, where false data floods their systems, where they have to operate manually with paper charts and backup instruments. It's like training pilots to fly without instruments, teaching sailors to navigate by stars, old skills, analog skills, the kind of skills that matter when all the fancy technology fails. Because the next war won't start with a missile, it'll start with a keystroke. But the Kennedy has another innovation, one the Navy barely talks about quantum-hardened encryption for command and control communications. Traditional encryption relies on mathematical problems that are hard to solve. A computer would take thousands of years to crack them. 
But quantum computers? They could break current encryption in minutes. China is already building quantum computers. So is Russia. The race is on. And when quantum computing matures, every encrypted message sent today could be vulnerable. So the Kennedy's designers built in quantum-resistant encryption. Algorithms designed to survive the quantum age. It's future-proofing, making sure this ship can operate securely, not just today, but 30 years from now. Because this carrier will serve until 2075. She needs to be ready for threats that don't even exist yet. Then there's the flight deck, where the real magic happens. The electromagnetic aircraft launch launching system, EMALS, the technology Trump criticized. It replaces steam catapults with linear motors, magnets that accelerate aircraft from 0 to 170 miles per hour in two seconds. The Ford had problems with it, failures, breakdowns, maintenance nightmares. But the Kennedy learned from those mistakes, improved software, better cooling systems, redundant power supplies. And here's why it matters. EMALS can launch heavier aircraft with more precision, less stress on the airframe which means longer service life for jets. It can also launch lighter aircraft, like drones, without modifications. The Navy is already experimenting with carrier-launched autonomous aircraft, surveillance drones, refueling drones, even combat drones. In 20 years, this ship might launch more drones than manned fighters, and EMALS makes that possible. Then there's the advanced arresting gear, the system that catches landing aircraft. Old carriers used hydraulic systems, simple, reliable, but limited. The Kennedy uses energy recovery. When an aircraft slams into the arresting cable, the system captures that kinetic energy, converts it to electricity, feeds it back into the ship's grid. It's regenerative braking, like a hybrid car, but for aircraft, over thousands of landings, that energy adds up, enough to power entire sections of the ship. It's efficiency, sustainability, things that matter when you're trying to operate a floating city in the middle of an ocean. The Kennedy also has automated deck handling robots still experimental still being tested but the idea is simple reduce crew exposure on the flight deck because the flight deck is the most dangerous workplace in america jets landing at 150 miles per hour jet engines that can suck a person in spinning propellers fuel lines ordnance subscribe for more briefings